Hello, Tendies, Friendies. Welcome back to Tendies Club. Got a great show. I came in too fast. Should be welcome back to Tendies Club. Got a great show for you. It was welcome back to Tendies Club. Got a great show for you. I came in too fast. Let's do it again. Hello, Tendies, Friendies. Welcome back to Tendies Club. Got a great show for you. 2022 in biotech. Neo.life has a great article about 2022 in biotech, including protein misfolding and AI and uh, stuff like that. So we'll tell you that there plays into Francisco buying Watson Health, perhaps. It plays into protein misfolding diseases. It pl plays into aging. And uh, we'll, we'll introduce the concept of uh, senescent cells and senolytics, senolytic drugs to combat senescent cells. So with that, my attendees, friendies, let's do it. Uh, please comment and chat and subscribe and like. Uh, I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not in the, this is not investment advice. I'm not a tax advisor. This is not tax advice. This is Tendies Club. Let's do it. Please hit like. Please hit like. You're going to like hitting like. Let me tell you. Oh, how about cassava? Cassava's up 10%. Cassava's up 10%. How about that? It was up as high as 45.40 before the shorts came and ruined, uh, ruined some of it. We're still up more than 10%. So pretty great stuff there. Get this. I'll get this one of these days. I'll get this sizing right. I'll do it. There we go. And so a good day around. And, and a novice up 8%. Anavex up uh, more than 5%. So the rest of the Alzheimer's, uh, small Alzheimer's stocks are doing really well. Cordex Zyme caught a small bid, 21 cents, up 3.5%, up over that $6 mark where it was hanging around after it's uh, got stopped, its trial stopped by the FDA. Bitcoin surging to 3.385. So here, here goes cassava, here goes crypto. So crypto seems to be trading with innovation. Isn't that something? Yeah, it used to have no correlation, and now it seems to trade with innovation. Isn't that something? GameStop's up 12%. What a day for uh, the, the beaten downs. Laredo and the oils, how CCLP. Laredo and the oils. CCLP's up a little bit. The other oil down a little bit. Uh, micro strategy only recovering 8% of Bitcoin uh, and, and the like surging. Micro strategy up 8%, but not getting the relief uh, I might have been hoping for, although Bitcoin's only up one and a half. So I guess it did it did get a bit of an extra surge. The long bonds are down. The, the short bonds are ever so slightly up. And then utilities are up one and a half percent. They were down oddly last week. But th this is the big story on Action News right here. It's the XBI. The XBI, the, as this is at a two-year low. How long can these beatings continue? The XBI is at a two-year low, and apparently not that much longer. We've been, we were saying blood in the streets. So if we back all the way out, see, look at, this is backing all the way out here. So we're going back to, we're going back to, so we're at, at this level, we're going all the way back here to like 2018. We dropped we were, we were up at 174, got cut in half down to 2018 level. So even with the rush today. So look, how long can the beatings continue? This could be, I mean, this is this is blood in the streets for sure. Even if you're buying in today, this is not even a bad, even not even a bad time. It's like, shoot, I missed a whole 5% run in the XBI. Nevertheless, uh, it's still, it's still after everything got cut in half. So then there's the IBB. I was wondering what's the difference between IBB and XBI. It's not the constituents, not necessarily. It's that one is cap weighted and one is equal weighted. So IBB is uh, cap weighted. So like like the S and P five hundred, like the SPY. So the largest uh, the largest constituents get a larger percentage portion. Whereas XBI, even if you're a small player, you still get an equal. If there's three hundred stocks, you get one three hundredth. So anyway, XBI, the small caps and mid caps. I'm not sure if there is small caps, but the smaller and mid caps. Uh, get uh, equally weighted with a large cap. So XBI is sort of what the more like what the smaller ones are doing. Okay, with that, let's look at do 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 this. Let's look at what to expect when biotech is expecting. What to expect when biotech is expecting? Whoa! All right. Okay. So this is Neo.life. So what's coming up in 2022? Well, since 2022 started out with one of the biggest headlines of recent years, that a surgical team transplanted a genetically engineered pig heart into a living person, we can be forgiven, perhaps, for expecting that there will be many more astonishing things to happen 
on the neo-biological frontier in the coming 12 months. So what will it be? Let's add that word. Good word. Good word. Neo-biological. Good word, neo.life. Well, it's, it's neo.life. That's why like, they like neo-biological. This site is neo.life. That's why they like making up the word neo-biological. So what will it be? We turned to some of the visionaries and innovators. Our question was simple. What is the most exciting, impactful, or scary development you're anticipating in 2022 in your field? So the first person we started with was Chris Mason, whose book, The Next 500 Years, Engineering Life to Reach New Worlds, was published by MIT Press last year. He says... In a major milestone for genetic engineering, he pointed to the thousands of people who will be emerging from clinical trials this year after having had their genomes edited, and he's expecting some of them to have been cured of the common genetic blood disorders, sickle cell anemia and beta thalassemia, th thalassemia and beta thalassemia. He's watching continued large-scale genome synthesis, which he predicts will make headlines this year, and also points to us the storage of information in DNA as a field that's due for a breakthrough. Mason is particularly bullish about what he will learn from large-scale efforts to map and track viruses and other emerging pathogens from sewage, air, and city surfaces, as well as the human samples from around the world. So uh, there's a lot, number of people emerging from clinical trials of having their genomes edited and so for the first time, having people's genomes edited could be the, the, the cure for diseases. We could start seeing that this year. That's interesting. And then uh, this idea, this storage of information in DNA, I just saw this somewhere else. In 2016, Microsoft bought some strands of DNA from this company in order to encode information, to store information in, in DNA. And I don't think we've heard anything about it since, but that, that's that's a that's an interesting thing that could be happening in the future <clears throat> or now. I don't know. And then there's Harvard biochemist and geneticist George Church, who says ten year ten it takes ten plus years. It generally takes. He's talking about he gives he's one of he's one of one to predict a year eleven months out because it takes ten plus years. It generally takes to get medical breakthroughs through the US FDA approval process. Nevertheless, with the record setting pace of accelerated approval for all the coronavirus drugs, vaccines, and medical devices, things could be changing. Church points to the factors that help make such a success of three of the top COVID-19 vaccine technologies. For one thing, they all used gene therapy technologies and each was a new method relative to the past and to each other. For instance, the AstraZeneca vaccine was based on an adenovirus capsid containing double-stranded DNA as opposed to an adeno-associated virus of the Johnson & Johnson and Jan Janssen vaccine. While the Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech vaccines were based on a single-stranded mRNA inside lipid nanoparticles. Secondly, each of them was approved by the FDA 10 times faster than the vast majority of therapeutic products. And finally, the cost per vaccine has been as low as $2 per dose for the United Nations COVAX Global Access Program. That's about a million times cheaper than Zolgen, Zolgensma, he says, referring to the AAV gene therapy medication used to treat spinal muscular atrophy. He also ventures a second prediction, the rise of genetic counseling, which is something he thinks could happen any day or never. Widespread premarital genetic counseling a, akin to Dor Yeshurim, the nonprofit also known as the Committee for Prevention of Jewish Genetic Diseases, would have a trillion dollar impact on health care, yet be essentially risk free and unregulated and rightly so. And so they go expand on that. Robert Green, the Harvard geneticist, they ask him, should we expect any changes, changes in the movements of genomic counseling from the lab to the bedside this year? So they're saying there's all, there's all these improvements that people could be having if they used genomic counseling, but don't. Nobody's using it. And so this guy says, until someone figures out how to muster the combination of evidence that can, con that can convince the medical establishment to adopt new technologies and engineers the logistics to put new medical workflows into place, the discoveries cannot reach their potential for transforming human health. Implementation science is the unsung handmaiden of biomedical discovery! Exclamation point. 
Nevertheless, he does predict 2022 will be the year that preventative genomics goes mainstream. The COVID-19 pandemic has been the public health emergency of our lifetimes, but behind the scenes, evidence has been gathering to fight the slower moving pandemics of cancer and heart disease through genomic medicine, but not Alzheimer's, strangely. He says, in 2022, we will see widespread implementation of precision public health using DNA analysis in the general population to stratify, to stratif to stratify disease risk and concentrate resources to save the lives of those greatest, at greatest risk. He also predicts a tipping point for widespread neonatal DNA sequ sequencing this year. In 2022, the explosive progress in gene editing and gene targeting therapies for inherited conditions presented in infancy will form an irrefutable rationale for offering genome sequencing to healthy newborns at scale. So a lot of genome stuff, lots of genome stuff. Harvard professor David Sinclair anticipates tens of billions of dollars will be invested in longevity research in a race to find molecules that reverse age. And he predicts that in 2022, the first drug to slow aging will enter the final stage of human clinical trials, which he said could be an NAD booster, which is in phase two, or metformin or a senolytic. So NAD, I've heard about, there's a guy that on YouTube that talked, an Australian uh, author and scientist who talks about NAD being a possible, uh, a possible uh, life or age reversing type of thing. If you look into like uh, fasting, if you look into fasting, it, it could possibly mimic like the benefits of fasting type of stuff. So that's what I know about NAD. And then metformin is, uh, metformin uh, stops your, uh, liver from releasing, well, amongst other things, it stops your liver from releasing glucose. And so then there's downstream processes that would then make up for it. So, which I don't, I don't understand why, why that would be a good thing, frankly. But anyway, uh, metformin is like really, really good for lo longevity, but both of those things. So this is, this is sort of a timeout. So there's a, there's a big, if for longevity, it's basically, if you want to live a long time, they know how you basically never eat protein and not a whole lot of carbohydrates either. You just eat like fat and really not much of it. And like, so basically never move and don't eat much and only eat fat and never protein. And, uh, and so they're, they're eating for performance versus eating for longevity is like just, a, a, they're at total odds. And so metformin basically does all of the longevity stuff and it, you wouldn't want it for performance. Anyway, that, that uh, on timeout. And then senolytic, a senolytic, there is senescent cells. Like if you get arthritis bad in your joints, you might have, a, as people age, you get a lot of like basically dead cells that are still in there causing a ruckus. And so uh, they're a big problem and uh, there's all different ones and they cause diseases and, and all sorts of problems. And then, but there's also things like quercetin is a, uh, a flavonoid. I think it's a flavonoid, but it's in onions and other stuff like that. And you can, I think you can get it as a supplement. But anyway, that one's known, that's known to kill, or to get rid of senescent cells. It's like zombie cells, senescent cells. So uh, that's what a senolytic is. Untime out. And then there's Alex Zero, Eric, Alex Zero Ronkov, the fast moving news generating founder of the Hong Kong based biotech in silico medicine. Another year of records in terms of AI powered drug discovery, which he says will demonstrate better speed, cost, and probability of success when compared with traditional approaches, and he anticipates that more companies will build AI-driven, fully automated robotic labs. Zoranikov sees 2022 as a major proof of concept year for protein folding predictions. Zoranikov sees 2022 as a major proof of concept year for protein folding predictions. The first hit or hit to lead molecules will be discovered using the alpha fold structures, he says. He also points to the rise of quantum computers, which will help in this effort. Mo molecules will be generated on quantum computers or simulated quantum computing platforms this year, he says. Like Sinclair, he expects to see a lot. They're, they do that already in monoclonal antibodies. They do stuff like that using computers to generate which what monoclonal antibodies would be good. Uh, like Sinclair, he expects to see a lot of corporate activity in the longevity space, predicting at least 10 more companies launching that will use AI for both regenerative medicine, gene therapy, and the traditional small molecule approaches. But he's also anticipating that Google and other big tech companies might finally announce some results, 
Google Calico officially launched in September 2013 and ingested billions, he says. I would be surprised not to see a drug in the clinic in the ninth year of their existence. On a related note, he suggests we would keep an eye out on pioneering pioneering AI researcher Demis Hassabis, Hassabis, CEO and co-founder of DeepMind, who has already started delivering very useful solutions. Interesting. And finally, he commented on aging clocks, predicting they will become even more mainstream. We will see at least one life insurance company start using biological aging clocks with their clients, and the first credible clinical trial supported by a, by a biological aging clock will be launched. Interesting. So they can look at your, uh, do blood work, I guess, and, and tell you how, age, how old you are biologically. And then he thinks that's going to start becoming mainstream. Interesting stuff there. Meantime, Sava's given up, uh, what do they give up a buck in the meantime? Down to 4269 And no wonder the XBI was up, like, what was it, up 4.8%? Look at that. As I started speaking, Kerplowy, Kerzumi, Kerplowy, and let's check out GameStop is up. Yeah, GameStop is up twelve percent. Something happened to the to the innovation and the biotechs. As I was speaking, they took a, so they got sold. Truthful, Joe, you're awesome. Thank you, my friend. What do you think about editing the Hillary Metz and Dr. Nikola videos down to show the patient success anecdotes? Well, on End Alzheimer's, I've done Hillary Metz. Somebody else did Dr. Baker. Although I want to do that one too. Uh, and then Dr. Nikola, I got I to gotta, uh, edit that one down too. Oh, but you mean just make one video of, of anecdotes, like make a video. Oh, that's a good idea. Take Doug and Hillary and uh, Dr. Nikolov's uh, anecdotes of the of the. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Truthful. Thank you. Great idea. Hello, Joe. Looking forward to a great show. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, Mike, for your uh, great referral today. Thank you. Paul, Joe, strongly urge you to look into V-Ray. Similar situation as Saba, though not as pronounced, performing well, saving lives, but big pharma trying to ruin them due to impact of this disruptive technology. V-Ray, we'll add it. We will add it. V-Ray. V Ray hmm, looks like it's it not as pronounced, but it got sold off from the sevens. Come now, scroll, 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 scroll. Doesn't want to scroll for me. Doesn't want to scroll for me. I don't like this stock. Doesn't want to scroll. Doesn't want to scroll. We'll have to go back. We'll go to Weeble. I keep forgetting to check on Weeble. V Ray. Type too fast. V Ray. And then the profile. Let's do that. View Ray manufactures and markets View Ray MRI, MRI Idian, MRI Dian, MRI Dian is a system that integrates radiation therapy and simultaneous magnetic resonance, resonance imaging, provides two generations of meridian, the first generation with cobalt 60 based radiation beams, and second generation meridian linic and linear accelerator based radiation beams. A Meridian system is comprised of three components, MRI, radiation delivery system, and integrated treatment planning and delivery software. A Meridian combines MRI and external beam radiation therapy to simultaneously image and treat cancer patients. A Meridian also records the level of radiation dose that the treatment also area has received. A Meridian employs MRI-based technology 
to provide real-time imaging of tumor and the surrounding soft tissues and, and other critical organs. All sounds very good. Market cap of 757. And they are in Ohio. So not, not, not one of the hubs, though. Not one of the hubs down with, uh, with this one. No. Uh, interesting. I will say, when it comes to medical imaging, there's a lot of medical imaging companies. So that's not at all to say that, there, that this one is... Uh, the, 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 that's not a, you know, a critique of this one at all, but it is to say, I, I don't really know enough about it to sep to say why this one is, is better or worse than other ones. I mean, you could tell us. So it looks interesting. I, I, I will say that there's just the medical imaging. There's just a lot of medical imaging companies out there is the one comment I would have, but this one may have better stuff. Like you're saying, this one's the disruptor. This one's better. Tell us more. Tell us more. Jacob. Hello, Jacob. Hi, Joe. Hi, Jacob. Did you end up reaching out to Remy? Yes, I did. Last week, since we didn't get any new announcements from Cassava, I wonder if the silence will break after Citizens Petition Dismissal. I reached out to Remy and I heard back. He will take a rain check. He will take a rain check. He was very kind. He was very nice. He got right back to me, but he will take a rain check. Rainer, for me, mRNA technology and especially BioNTech and Moderna are long-term holdings. BioNTech is running a lot of trials to develop vaccines against cancer. Interesting. Moderna starts with their with a uh, with a vaccine against HIV. Interesting. Yeah, Moderna. Uh, I don't. I, I, not that I'm you know know tons about it, but their their type of vaccine is supposedly the best. So. It, it, for COVID, and so I guess that they have the best technology for for vaccines in general. I don't, you know, I don't know. You you could tell me better, but so the mRNA technology, yeah. So I guess that's the best. That's the best for the COVID as well as the others. Interesting. That is that's what I understand. So interesting. Thank you, Rainer. Shorts speculating that huge borrow interest for shorts indicates bad news for Saba coming very soon. Yeah, yeah. So there is a lot of short interest, and they're going to say, "Oh, well, that means that there's something wrong with it." Yep. Google reporting after close today, expecting big results. Huh, I just watched. Uh, I kind of am too, but I'll, I'll never buy Google. I just watched uh, the guy on, on Joe Rogan talking about uh, how Google operates and how those cars that go around taking pictures of everything. Did you know they're collecting everything from Wi-Fi, including uh, passwords and all that stuff? And they ended up paying a $25,000 fine for that. <laughs> and they shut down the whole internet for 40 minutes in the world, everyone, <laughs> for the heck of it, just because they could. Don't, and don't be evil, my butt. <laughs> Quezzy, my friend. Good to see you, my friend. Gra so glad you're here. Great to see you. Good to see you, Joe. Thank you. Hope you are well, my friend. I am savage for life. Me too. Savage for life. I'm with you. We need your green shirt, Joe. Okay, okay. Next shirt, next. Oh, I just ordered. Uh, I'm wearing the same one again today because I couldn't. Uh, I gotta, I gotta un unpack the other ones. But I just ordered like nine dress shirts. So I was gonna. I think I got some green stuff in there. Maybe, maybe if not, order some green dress shirts. Let's have some more likes. Thank you, Rainer. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, sixty watching, thirty three likes. Please hit likes. There's actually YouTube has this program where uh, puppies and kittens starve if you don't hit the like button. But then when you hit the like button, then the, they feed the puppies and kittens, and it's very nice. So please hit like for the puppies and kittens. I don't want, to, uh, don't want them to starve. Please hit like for the puppies and kittens. Please hit like for the puppies and kittens. There's also a burning uh, children's hospital, and they can only get water uh, with likes on uh, Tendies Club. Uh, so please hit like uh, to save the, the kids in the burning hospital, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's look around the market. Sava trying to hold 43, although it was up over 45. I guess we'll blame Jay Powell every time it goes down. That must be must have been Jay Powell. Hey, we got some likes. Thank you guys for the likes. The puppies and and uh, and and kittens and the children that are <laughs> they really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Long bonds are down half a percent now. So both the spy and the Qs. The Qs had dipped under two percent. Let me move myself out of the way. Whoa. So the so the Qs have now recovered to 360. So that, that's that's quite a recovery for the Qs. Let me give me zoom in a little bit there just to see where we were with the Qs. Uh, 
going to have to move myself again. Whoa. So, so there's a pretty good recovery there for the, for the cues. Remember, we came from all the way up there. This is, this is Jay Powell right Mia. Oops. This is Jay Powell right Mia. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So it's never really recovered until right now. It's been, this is the first significant recovery since Powell. First significant recovery since Powell. So remember, Nancy Pelosi bought her call options when queues were around 380, went right up and then came slamming down. So queues having their best day in a while, 2.4% up. Progressive down a little, EIG up a little, so the financials are sort of just hanging around. And this the spider biotech almost up four percent now. So this the small guys are having their rally. Couldn't they couldn't be couldn't get bashed forever. It's quite a bashing. Quite a bashing, but it couldn't go down forever. Palance here up more than five percent. Oh, how's Tesla doing? Tesla's up almost ten percent after Tesla's after how how else did it, how was the rest of the so Tesla never really sold off too much it held on to most of its gains upstart up more than twelve percent nicely done Neo up more than fifteen percent pretty good Jacob, I hope the shorts aren't waiting until later this week to bring the price back down after this green day. I hope the shorts aren't waiting until later this week to bring the price back down after this. I agree with you, Jacob. Green day. Oh, yeah. Green day is a good, uh, uh, good band, aren't they? Yes. No, I agree with you. Yeah. I, I mean, who knows? But maybe we'll get some news. Maybe we'll get some news. Daily Mix. I mentioned in the morning show that we will jump today. Hey, you were right. It didn't even, it didn't happen. It was funny because it didn't even move at all while we were watching. There was no volume, real slow upticks. I guess it started going up a little bit. It was like 2% or 3%. Or but then it surged as soon as we got off. Let's go back to it. Back to it. Trying to hold 44 and volume of 1.47, so not going to get to 2 million volume. It's been light volume lately, but today was a little bit of a recovery back to normal volume. It's been very light lately. John Castains mentioned you as the guy with the colored shirts, so you get his attention. <laughs> That's cool. The guy with the colored shirts. <laughs> Daily Mix. Jay Powell likes to shut down parties in the market, LOL. Yeah, he was probably a hall monitor in school. And I don't know. <laughs> it's like, you know, if you're going to if you're going to do something with integrity, stop the organized crime, please. Mad. Hey, Mads. Good to see senior SR investing in the future of, of, blow, of blow via Watson Health. So good for good to see Sanford Robertson investing in the future of bio via Watson Health. Yeah, and, and you know what? I'm glad you brought that up because with all of the talk of AI being a big year for AI, interesting to see that he bought Watson Health in, in that context. So obviously his Sava investment has made him more red, uh, i.e. biotech, put more red, i.e. biotech. Yeah, I like it. I like it, Mads. I like it. Mikkel, have you heard any news on IKT? No, but we should be getting uh, the first two cohorts of the uh, phase two trial phase two uh, a trial i guess in parkinson's this quarter that should be should be the next news i guess hope i mean we had we had dr milton warner on for the second time i guess two or maybe three weeks ago now that was the last i've heard rainer hope remy and sanford sitting together developing a strategy to hit the shorts hard me too strong probability of a green week we're in, we're in a bit of a lull period between Fed meetings. Ah, oh, good time to risk on. Yeah, interesting. I was wondering, I was wondering that myself because every time the market hates uncertainties, every time before the Fed, no matter what, you get crap. And uh, even if it's even if it's just volatility, it's still <laughs> it's still tough to stomach, even if it goes back to where it was. But yeah, when then when there's not when there's no longer Fed meetings, then it can have a chance to recover. Yeah, before the volatility comes back. 
I wonder when the next one is. Truthful, when you edit your Saba patient successes video, make it as short as possible. That's a good idea. I know, people hesitate to watch long videos. You're right. Keep adding it to the future interview anecdotes. Huh. Maybe we'll start doing one planned regular show a day and then maybe more short clips. Because it's true. I mean, I, I feel like if it, obviously if, if, if these videos were shorter, more people would watch them. So that's a good, it's a good, it's nice to do long ones too, but maybe one long one a day and then, and then like a number of short ones. Who knows? Good for now. Good for now. All right. I got a, some, uh, some things percolating for interviews coming up. So that'll be good once, once those are, uh, and once those are solidified, I'll announce those. So that'll be good. And with that, my attendees, friendies, uh, cassava recovering nicely, 43.50 as uh, we head around the 330 base. So good stuff. Uh, we'll pick up again at 9 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I will uh, we'll have a good time then. Truthful says, you will find it painful to have to lose some vid to make it short, make the vid short. Yeah, I mean, and, and they're, but they're, like, I, I, I cut Hillary Metz's down. But it was still 20 minutes. But everything she said was so important. And uh, but I mean, when these people give their testimonials, they speak from the heart. They don't they don't have bullet points and say dot dot dot. You know, here it is. It, it, it's you know, it, it it does take some time. But like, cause I don't, I don't know what I would cut from Hillary's interview. It was 20 minutes. It was 40 something minutes, and I cut it down to like 20. I, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll just get the all star stuff out of you know stuff out of footage out of there. But it was. Uh, It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be tough to make cuts, but no, you bet I will, though. It's a good point, and so I'll do it. Yep. Ooh, new interviews coming. We got new interviews, buddy. We got new interviews, my friend. New interviews, my friend. Yep. All right, Sandy's friendies. I will see you at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Thanks so much for being here. Great to see you. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.